Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This video is going to be our annual Q&A. So if you watched my last video, I actually also leave questions in the comment section, anything that y'all might have for me. So I have most of those printed out and I'm going to be answering them on this video. Now I was supposed to film this in Louisiana, but after looking at my schedule, I realized there was just no time. I have to prepare for a Christmas party at my house, Ran just lost a lens on her glasses, so I have to figure out when I can head to the eye doctor when we get home so I can get that taken care of. But I am representing with my cute little Cajun sweatshirt. And actually, when y'all are watching this video, I will be sitting on the bayou, so I am, I know I will be so excited to be home and spend the holidays back in Louisiana. Okay, let's get to the questions. I'm going to try not to be too long winded. I have around 20 questions. Um, I don't want this video to be crazy long, but I do want to try to answer as many questions as possible. Okay, Lisa Lede asks, what was the first project you ever did and were you hooked on creating at that moment? So I would say that I've always created since I was very small. It's always something that I have done and has been in me, but I will post some of the very first projects that I ever created. I don't know if I was hooked at that moment, but I was a stay-at-home mom and I felt like it was something to do that was creative and I just realized that I always needed to be creative. Like, even though I was staying at home and taking care of my kids, they were very young at the time, the three um, older ones, there were all three young at the time and I needed that. So it kind of just started off as me making presents for teachers and then I would post it on my Facebook page and then I had people asking me to make stuff and it just kind of snowballed from there. So I don't know if I was like hooked, like I certainly didn't know it would become what it is today, but being creative is just something I have always done and that has always been in me. I hope that kind of answers your question. V Ford asks, are you selling stuff you make but are not using in your own home? Where are you selling? I love watching you because you are so a beat. Thank you very much. Um, I am going to be selling on Squarespace, which will be an online store. It has not launched yet. I am just preparing and learning the program right now and yes i guess i will be selling stuff that i'm not keeping for myself things i've thrifted things that i'm making specifically for sale and i will give y'all more details on that as it happens and i kind of um want y'all input as well you know if there's something specific that you would like to see me sell i want to know that because y'all are my customers and i want to sell things that y'all want to buy so I feel like just like my last question where my business kind of evolved, I feel like the website will be the same way. I'm not going to set high expectations. At this point, I don't have like major plans and major goals for the website. I'm just going to get it started and we will see how it evolves. So if you have any input, I am definitely interested in that. Okay, Colleen asks, how do you prep glass before painting? Y'all... I am not a good prepper unless it is filthy. I just start painting, <laughs> to be honest with y'all. Glass, if it's dirty, I stick it in the dishwasher. Um, I really never have problems with paint sticking to pieces, but if you do, you could clean it. And uh, you could also spray like a clear coat or put some Mod Podge or something on it, and that'll help the paint adhere. But I am just like more like, a get it done as quick as possible kind of person. I am sorry if you are not and that makes you cringe that I don't clean stuff and I'm just like, we're painting it anyway. What does it matter? <laughs> Becky asks, hey girl, have you thought about partnering with Kilgore's? See if they will dedicate a space booth in their store for you to showcase their items that you flip. It's a win-win you get to sell your creations and bring more foot traffic to their store. So y'all know I love Kilgore's, but Kilgore's have been in business way before me. So although I have brought more attention to their store, they do not need me. <laughs> 
they are doing just fine i do love shopping there i will probably buy stuff there to sell on the website but i don't think that we will really be partnering up besides me going there and filming it would be really fun to possibly do a pop-up on a saturday or something but with my schedule and my husband's schedule and the kids i'm not sure that would really happen but Kill Cars is good. Uh, Y'all go shop over there. They are so nice, so sweet, and you've seen the videos. They have the most amazing stuff. Okay, this is a question I get a lot. Kathy asks, what paint color do you use for the interior of your home? So if you are struggling with paint colors and you want a warm white, y'all just go with these paint colors. I am telling y'all, I have done them in so many homes. My friends have done them in their homes. This color always looks good. So my wall color is Sherwin-Williams White Duck in a satin or eggshell finish. You should always go with that finish for your walls. My moldings is Sherwin-Williams Greek Villa in a semi-gloss. I always go with semi-gloss for trim and cabinetry and doors because it is easy to clean, but it's not super shiny. I do not like a gloss. I just find it's too shiny. So I hope this helps y'all out. Just go with those paint colors. Trust me, it matches with everything. You will not be disappointed. Sherry asks, do you see any major changes coming in 2022 with color styles of home decor? I have no idea. I don't keep up with trends. Um, maybe I should, but I just like what I like and I don't really care if it's trendy or not. All these comments I get on my YouTube videos that are like, what are you going to do? Farmhouse is going out of style. Like, I don't care. <laughs> if I like it, I like it. Like, I don't care what's in style. Um, and I don't even know specifically what my style is. It's always changing. It's always evolving. And I just know what I like. And I just make it work all together. And if that's how you are, then you just don't even need to worry about trends. <laughs> Tammy asks, do you work out at the gym every day? How do you stay so positive or do you ever have dry spells of when you can't come up with new ideas? So I do not work out every day, but I would love to. And there's definitely some weeks that I do. It just depends on what I have going on, but a more realistic goal for me is three days a week. I like to at least get three days a week in, but I do like working out every day if I can because I just feel like it puts me in a positive mindset. Um, it just changes my whole mood. I think when you become older, working out is definitely a more mental thing, especially when you have a lot of kids and a lot of stress. It just kind of gets you in a good place. It makes me feel good. It makes me more productive. So I do like to work out every day, but you know, when you have a busy life, I would say three days a week is definitely realistic and you can maintain your goals. I'm not trying to lose weight or anything. Working out is just a part of my life. It is something I have always done and I am like, as you get older, if you can just maintain, I mean, that is the goal. That is what I'm going for. Oh, and then the second part of her question is, do you go through any dry spells when you can't come up with new ideas? Um, not that I can think of. I feel like I have a never ending amount of ideas, but sometimes I do get overwhelmed about the amount of ideas that I have and not having enough time to execute them all. And then I just get so overwhelmed that I can't do anything. <laughs> that definitely happens. And if I do have a time that I need like a creative break, then I just take it because nothing good comes from just being overwhelmed all the time. So like I'm filming some very easy videos right now so that I can take off the rest of the year and just come back completely re-energized, re-motivated and ready to get creative. So if you need those breaks, definitely take them. Avery's next asks, will you sell wood pieces such as spindles, corbels, small wood box, etc., for DIY? I think that is a great idea, especially spindles because they are very light. I feel like if I can keep them under a pound, that that would be a very easy thing to ship out. But like I said earlier in the video, I want y'all input. I want to know what y'all want to buy and what y'all want to see 
on the website. So if that is something y'all want, that is definitely something that I can do. Okay, Canterbury Cottage asks, what other DIYers do you watch on YouTube? Who is your favorite? Okay, I feel like she wants me to say her. <laughs> I do watch Canterbury Cottage. If y'all do not know me, Canterbury Cottage and Teresa with Our Green Acres did a collaboration and I think they would agree that the best thing that has come out of that collaboration is we have become such good friends. Y'all, we literally talk every single day um, in 2022, um, spoiler alert, uh, we're going to try to meet up and get together in person, which is exciting. So I am so glad I did that collaboration. I actually kind of had a rule for myself that I wasn't going to do any collaborations just because with four kids, I don't know what it's going to look like week to week. One of them could be sick and I wouldn't be able to film. And I just didn't want to commit to something that I couldn't follow through with. But when they asked me, I did have to think about it for a while. And I just felt like it was something that my subscribers would really love um, because I know a lot of y'all watched all three of us already and we kind of do the same things but have different styles. So I was really excited to do that collaboration and it has been amazing to have people to talk to that do YouTube, that understand, you know, kind of what we go through and have people to bounce ideas off of. Okay, I feel like I'm totally going off on a tangent and not answering her question. <laughs> but, um, so of course I do watch Canterbury Cottage and Our Green Acres, but I have to be honest, I don't watch a lot of DIYers. I prefer people that do shopping videos and hauls and that's why I like to incorporate that on my channel because that is the stuff that I enjoy watching. Okay, Kim Collins asks, what kind of goals do you set for yourself starting out? Did you set for yourself starting out? How long did it take you to build up people that wanted to buy from you and where did you get them from? YouTube, Facebook, etc. So I would say starting out, I didn't have any goals. Just like I just told y'all with the website, I don't have any goals. I just want to get started and let it kind of evolve and see what it's going to turn into. And then I will probably set very clear goals because I'm just that kind of a person. But I have to see if it's something that's going to work out first. So my advice would be at first just to make sure it's something that you really want to do and just get it started. And then once it kind of gets started, then you could set goals for yourself. Um, I would set small goals like I would do my Facebook live sales and I would say, OK, I want to have 25 items on this sale. So I would have to get 25 items done. When I would do a craft show, I would say, okay, I want this amount of product where like if y'all watched my first craft show video, my goal was $10,000 of product. Um, that was a very high goal and I almost met that. Um, so it definitely helps to set very clear goals, to write them down, to speak them out loud. Um, but I don't think you need to overwhelm yourself with goals when you're first starting out. And my business grew, I think, mostly through Facebook because like I said, I started sharing stuff on my personal page and that kind of got the ball rolling, just kind of an accident. Um, I didn't mean to start reselling, it's just what happened. And then I started a Facebook business page and that is mainly how I um, sold stuff. And then I also started doing craft shows and things like that when I could. It is definitely you know, something that is a huge time commitment. So it could be difficult to do if you have younger kids and not a lot of help. But I feel like now with social media, there's so many other ways to sell besides craft shows, but they are so fun and I do miss doing them. Okay, Susan has a wonderful question. I'm so glad she asked this. What is the mixed combo of your antiquing concoction? I thought at one time you had added oil or something to the wax and water. Okay, so like years ago on one of my first videos, I showed the antiquing concoction because I have been using it for years and I originally added oil to it 
and I did in that video but I don't do that anymore I just use it so much the oil you just don't even need so it's just literally water and antiquing wax and the mixture is up to you if you want it darker you add more antiquing wax if you want it lighter then you have more water and oh my gosh y'all I went back and watched that video cringe <laughs> that was bad before I really edited so it's like literally me for 13 minutes telling you how to mix antiquing wax and water and Ren was in the background making her noise she was just a little bit of baby oh my gosh yeah I definitely edit my videos down way more now back in the day I would just talk and then post the videos <laughs> it was bad so I appreciate you if you have watched that video okay Laura asks do you still have two homes if so are you planning to keep two so I know I have a lot of new subscribers to my channel and I got so many questions about the house here and the house in Louisiana and our living situation and I'm gonna try to answer these the best I can but I want y'all to keep in mind this is a DIY channel I don't share every part of my life and really don't want to so you may not understand because you don't have all the details because I'm not giving it to you so just know that we feel like we are making the best decisions for our family yes we still have two homes no we do not plan on keeping two homes we really love our house in Louisiana it is amazing it is not a home that we could sell and then buy another one like it so luckily we were able to keep that home while we decide what we want our future to be so we kind of gave ourselves a cutoff date we're gonna let the kids finish out this school year and then we're kind of gonna sit down as a family and really decide what we want our future to look like so we do not want to keep homes just at this moment we were able to and we felt like that was the best decision so that we could really give this place a try but kind of still have our home in Louisiana that way if we want to go back that is also an option so that's kind of where we're at now and we still haven't figured out so I don't know y'all I don't know it's a hard decision to make okay Susie asks Will you be moving back to your house in Louisiana? Will we ever meet your husband at Great Hall? Okay, so I feel like I just kind of answered some of that question. So my husband, I also got questions about him and I asked him if he would, you know, do a little clip in this video um, because y'all wanted to see him. And he's like, I have been on a few lives and said, hello, my lives are on my channel membership. And when I pointed that out to him, he said, yes, they have to pay to see me. <laughs> he's so funny he does work a lot um and my channel membership some of the lives I do at night so he's home and he's popped on and said hello um he probably also wants me to talk about channel membership because he thinks I don't do enough self-promoting I don't talk about channel membership hardly ever on YouTube or say like please subscribe to my channel please like this video I just I don't know I don't like doing that <laughs> but the channel membership is $6.99 a month and we do two lives a month so it's like every other week and it's like if you like this video you would like channel membership it's very laid back we just hang out the ladies in channel membership have really helped shape some of the decisions I've made for my business they are wonderful and give, just give so much great advice so I get as much out of it as I hope that my channel memberships do so it's if you like this video like I said you would probably like channel membership because this is exactly what it is just me and y'all chit chatting and talking for an hour every other week and if you would like to join there should be a little join button for you to click right below this video Amanda asks, I am newer to your channel and I love everything that you do. Could you explain a little about having a house in Louisiana and where you're living now? Are you planning to move back to Louisiana? Okay, I don't know why I put that question in because I feel like it's the same thing I just answered. Um, we live in South Louisiana. That is where me and my husband's family is from. That is where we're from. And over the summer, we moved to North Mississippi. And like I said, we our plans are still up in the air at this point. Debbie asks, what does Max do for a living? How is his how is his work so far from your home in Louisiana? 
Do you like living outside of Louisiana, weather, geography, culture, shopping, people, etc.? Okay, my husband is a turnaround planner for a plant. So if you are familiar with plants, they have to do a shutdown and maintenance every so often. So they are losing an insane amount of money when they shut down. So it has to be super efficient. So he will spend, you know, a year planning this one shutdown so that way we, they could have the material, they could have the workers and everything can happen as fast as possible so they can get the plant up and running again. So one of the main reasons we moved here is because he is planning for a huge shutdown in 2022. So he has been working so much to plan for this shutdown. And then when the shutdown happens, oh my gosh, he works an insane amount of hours. So the only way we would even be able to see him is if we were here because he's going to be working so much. And he has always worked away from home. That may seem weird for people. Some, for some people, but from where I'm from, that happens a lot where the husband travels and the the wife stays home with the kids and does all that. So for us, it was kind of a very common thing. And then a situation happened in January where he was able to get a permanent job here and it kind of opened up the opportunity for us to move here. And it had been something that we have been thinking for a very long time. So we are excited to be here. I can say that me and the kids are really liking it here. The weather is so good. Like I literally have nothing good to say about the weather in South Louisiana. Like <laughs> it is awful, it's hot, it's humid. I am not looking forward to going home for Christmas and probably being in shorts. Um, so we love the weather over here. The kids like the school, everybody's adjusting well. I have found amazing places to shop and thrift. Um, the culture, that is like the big kicker for me because I am from a Cajun culture. And to be away from that definitely seems a little bit weird. And to think about my kids not growing up in that culture is also a little disheartening. But Louisiana is always home and that is still where our family's at and where we will always visit. And we can always get a camp there as well. So yes, we are liking it here, but we also love South Louisiana, except for the weather. <laughs> Pam asks, why did you leave so much in Louisiana? The expense of starting collections again is high. And then what will you do with two sets of everything? Okay, that is a great question. Um, we already kind of had two sets of everything already because my husband was already living here in a camper. So we had all his, you know, household stuff from there. And you have to think that it takes about $150 of gas to get there and back. You know, it's not right around the corner. It is a seven hour drive. So what we've been doing is just filling up the car every time we go home, but it didn't make sense for us to bring everything here because we still need stuff over there. All the kids have different bed sizes here. Really the only piece of furniture, if we sold our house in Louisiana, that I would want to move here is my bed in my master bedroom because I love that bed so much and would really love to have it with me wherever I am permanently living. But beyond that, what the plan is, is if we sell the house in Louisiana to pack up the stuff that we just feel we can't live without and sell everything else. It just does not make sense to haul it all here. We've already kind of replaced everything. I feel like I've done a really good job of keeping the prices low of the stuff that we bought here. That way also, if we have to sell this stuff that hopefully I can make money off of it or at least get what I paid for. So that's kind of the plan. And I feel like for us, that made perfect sense. It just with the price of gas and everything, it, it didn't make sense for us to move all that stuff from this house. Uh, from that house to this house, especially since we're going to need stuff when we go back home. Kathy asks, does your new home feel like home yet? Have you met some people that feel like friends? I hope My hope is that your new town understands your gifts and talents. So I do feel like this feels like a home now that we got all the major construction done. Actually, when we got the flooring put up, the final flooring put up upstairs, my husband walked up after it's done. It was done and like he 
breathed a sigh of relief. He was like, now this feels like a house we can live in. So it was just such a mess when we moved in here. And me and my husband are just both not people that can just settle and live with it. So we just had to do all the stuff to just get this house looking decent and a place that we could personally live. So now that that is all done and most of the rooms somewhat have furniture, um, it definitely feels like home. We have made friends. I feel like it's a little bit easier when you have kids because kids make friends so easy and then you become friends with their parents. So that is what has happened. And we do have several friends on the street. We've had parties, we've had them over and it's been really good. I don't know if a lot of people know what I do. I do not go around talking about it or advertising it. So I'm really not sure. I Just from the comments on YouTube, I know there are several people in the area that watch me, but I don't plan on doing any kind of craft shows or anything around here just because of the kids and not having a sitter and stuff like that is just not something that I can do. So I'm not sure if the town knows about me or not. <laughs> Lisa asks if your workshop set up in your garage. Yes, it is. I would not say it's a very efficient workshop right now. It's literally just kind of the tools and stuff that I need to get house projects done and get a few things done for my video. So that is definitely high up on my list of priorities is to really get an efficient workshop set up. And what I mean by that is to have my tools in a place that I can use them and don't have to move them around. I need a clean workbench and I also need a painting station that I can kind of get messy. So to have those things and not to have to, to move them and take them out and pick them up, um, that is what I need to work on. That way I can efficiently work on stuff for the website and make stuff in bulk. Like making one thing at a time is fine the way I have it set up. But like I said, I just need a more efficient workspace in order to work more quickly. Candace asks, when can we expect to see a never enough basket sign from you? Or even a y'all no, it just has to come home with me. <laughs> Those are some signs that I definitely need in my life. So I do feel like I need that basket sign as well. And I mean, that's where I originally started with signs. So I think it would be very appropriate for me to make some signs for the website. Y'all just let me know what y'all want. And everything will most likely be a limited quantity because the last thing I want to do is to have to make a hundred of the same signs. I definitely want to keep it fun and fresh. So I'll probably just make like five to 10 of each sign and that's it and move on. Blue Cotton asks, where did you get your rug? Can you add the link? So I'm pretty positive she's asking about the rug from my last video, which is in my master bedroom. All of my rugs come from Amazon because when we moved here, like we just couldn't find anything in the stores. Um, and I found them on Amazon for great prices and I have been very happy with the rugs that I purchased. So I will put the one that is in my master bedroom in the link in the description. A link to it in the description. The Rusted Willow asks, does your husband get upset with your hoard? We recently rented a storage unit so I could move my stuff out of the garage and he could have his own space. Yes, girl. Yes. I feel like he's better now since like I'm really making a living of it that he really tries to tolerate it the best he possibly can. But in our house in Louisiana, we had that outside kitchen and we have that huge workshop. And he literally thought both of those spaces were going to be for him. And I just completely took him over. <laughs> so in this house, he actually does have his own room. That was a request that he had. And I'm like, 100%, you work so hard. I have taken over every one of your spaces you thought you were going to have. So over here, he has his own room to do his own stuff his um he actually does have a hobby he likes to restore vintage hot wheels so he has a room where he can do that or just go hang out in there or whatever so good for you girl good for you for giving him his own space that kind of sucks that you had to go rent a storage unit though but yeah i try i try not to drive him crazy with it but i'm gonna show y'all 
my dirty little secret what's going on right now look so i did that haul last week look where the stuff is still sitting right there right there i have not picked it up so i probably need to do that you know it's still a struggle for me <laughs> but i'm trying all right i probably shouldn't have touched my camera because i had to go fix it but i just wanted to let y'all know that i struggle as well Terry asks, where do you get all of your inspiration? I try to stay inspired by the items that I found. Fine. So for me, shopping and going to antique malls and places like that is vital to my creativity. That's what I tell myself anyway. <laughs> but I think that's the only way that I have found to keep my ideas fresh and different and just straight from my head is to find something and see it and be inspired by it and see what it can turn into. So I try not to watch what other people are doing. I try to stay off of Pinterest. Actually, I don't even have the app on my phone. I am very inspired though by the Julie's Designs and Science Facebook group because some people post some amazing projects on there and it's hard not to be inspired and want to recreate some of the other ideas that people are posting but yeah that's what I, I really try to just stay inspired by the items that I found I usually if I stare at them long enough an idea will come to me on what I can turn them into okay Kendall asks what are the best sellers the top 10 for you wow that is like a really hard question um it's hard because just with the success that i've had and the platform that i have almost anything that i make sales i can't think of anything that i made that didn't sell and um i think that has you know part to do with my talent but also just the amount of people that buy my stuff but I would say the things that I remember making a lot of, of course, breadboards, risers, um, especially if you can get some unique wood. Some signs are some things that are unique to your area, like the oyster nativity sets that I would do or the little Christmas ornaments or I made this sign that said, man, yeah, I made that. So like, you know, if you have like a Cajun slang saying or something, something that people cannot get anywhere else, those seem to sell well for me. Wood that is unique to your area, shells that are unique to your area. So try to be inspired by the stuff that you have around you and what makes your area special. Vicky asks, how do you keep your stash from becoming more of a hoard mess than a fun thrifting situation? Okay, <laughs> I feel like I just touched on this a minute ago, but um, I think the best advice I have is just to be very selective when you are out thrifting. I will never tell y'all not to go thrifting because is something that I would never do. You know, I need to go thrifting to stay creative and to stay inspired, but I have tried to be super selective about what I bring in. So if you have 10 of these items, then you probably don't need any more. If it's something that is not selling, but you love, you have to be real with yourself and say, okay, I love this item, but other people are not loving it. I don't need to pick that up anymore. If you have 10 items in your garage that you have not painted yet and you realistically will not paint, then you don't need to pick up any more of those items. I talk to so many people that pick up all this furniture and they plan on painting it and they just never do. So like you just need to be real with yourself and realistic on what you will and will not do. And remember that when you are out shopping. Because if you have too much stuff around, like you said, it becomes an overwhelming mess instead of a fun situation. So you need it to be manageable. And if it's overwhelming to you now, you probably just need to go through all your stuff and go back and donate some items. 
I know it's hard, but trust me, you will feel so much better just to kind of like clear out and reassess because I guarantee you picked up some items that are just going to be too much work. You're not going to want to put the time into it. Just get rid of it, girl. Just get rid of it. It's okay. Tina asks, what are some life experience, lesson learned, tips you would give someone just getting brave enough to set up a local booth and begin selling repurposed and newly created home decor items. I love doing this, but I don't have a college education or degree, just a school of hard knocks. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing every one of your ideas and posts as well as other sweet ladies in the group. You're very inspiring to me. So, I mean, I don't think you need any kind of college degree. I have one, but that has nothing to do with what I do now. Um, and I think we all have to go through <laughs> the school of hard knocks. And that would be my biggest advice. Like if you are going and starting a booth, you really need to take constructive, constructive criticism. Like you need to hear from your customers and find out what they like and don't like, and don't take it personal, take it as business criticism so that you can get better. Um, so I would try to fill your booth with as much stuff as possible and really start evaluating what is selling, what is not selling in your area because every area is different. So that always makes it, um, people always want prices for me or like what sells best. And I can tell y'all what I do, but that may not work in your area. So it is really something that you just have to get started and figure out for yourself. Um, I think posting things on Facebook on your personal page or your business page is a great idea. I used to do that all the time just to get feedback from my customers. If it was something that they really liked or didn't really like, you can kind of tell just from engagement because people will always be nice and tell you that they like your stuff. But if you only get like two comments on it, then you probably know that is something people are not into. If you get 50 comments on it, then you know that idea is a thumbs up. So my advice is to listen to your customers and sometimes you just have to live and learn. All right, that is all the questions I had for this video. I hope I did not ramble on too much, but there is one more thing that I would like to talk about. I would like to know what your goals are for 2022. I think there is so much power and speaking your goals out loud, also writing them down and looking at them. So if that is something that you would like to share, I would love to know what they are. Me personally, for 2022, I think my goals is to diversify my business. So I definitely want to continue to grow on YouTube. I would love to get 100,000 subscribers on YouTube so I could get that YouTube plaque. I think my kids would just be so excited. Of course I would as well, but I just love when my kids are excited about what I'm doing and proud of me and I know that plaque would mean so much to them. So I would love to hit that goal and get that plaque and I got exciting news. I just got my Facebook business page monetized, which is amazing. I've been working really hard to get that done these past few months. So if you want to help me on that journey, if you just share those little short videos that I've been posting on YouTube, it is amazing the power of sharing on Facebook. It just puts so many more eyes on your video. So if you want to do that, I would appreciate that so much. And then of course, I will be starting my website, which is very exciting. Um, so I will be able to get my creations and my designs to anyone that wants to buy them. And I know that is something that y'all have been asking for for a long time. So I think 2022 for me will be exciting not only in my business life but in my personal life i am excited to see what this next year has in store i hope y'all enjoyed this video i hope you found it inspirational informative and most of all i hope you enjoyed it y'all have a great day and a wonderful christmas and i will see y'all in the next video